Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. NFL Talks with Ox, Fox and Ox. That's what it is. One of Mike the Mike, Mike came here. We got my man, Ken Ox and Dion, Dion Fox here. They are NFL alum, and we are talking football. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Mr. Fox, let folks know who you are. Dion Fox, graduate of Meadowbrook High School, from there, James Madison University. From there, Miami Dolphins, played with Washington Redskins at the time, now known as the Commanders. A uh, little stand at Green Bay uh, for a little bit. And then, you know, Canadian Football League, XFL. I'm now back in Richmond, uh, working in the school system. I'm also the president and founder of 5756 Foundation, 5756foundation.org. Mr. Fox at 5756 Foundation and at 5756 Foundation. Also the president of NFL Alumni here in Richmond, the Richmond chapter. Dion.fox at NFLalumni.org. Thank you, sir. Ken Ox and Dion. Ken Ox and Dion, Chester, Virginia, Thomas Dale, a graduate, Virginia Tech, Hokey, um, Falcons uh, drafted by, went, got a chance to go to the Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl that the Falcons had, then went on and played in the XFL. They had a stint in um, the coaching world, coaching on um, high school, college, and over in NFL Europe, and then came back to the States to um, <clears throat> and back to my hometown to put my um, foundation back on the map. And uh, Brown and Oxidine Sports Group, KenOxidine.com, and all those um, things um, that, where we can be found at. Really quickly, gentlemen, so we, uh, we're we going to get to football in a moment. You guys are a big time uh, committed to the community. We'd like to thank you for that one right there. So uh, let's start to you, Mr. Fox. When you look at organizations that are out there, you played at different ones, whether it's here, the Canadian Football League, what's one organization that stands out to you and you say, well, I like the way that they did business, and why was that? Um. As far as overall business being done, you talking about a particular team? Not, not okay, just, yeah, so, the team or the organization. Um, for the teams that I were affiliated with, I'd have to say overall while I was playing Miami. Okay. Overall, after I finished playing that I've dealt with Washington from just my experience. Not everything is perfect. Understand what I'm saying. Not everything is perfect. However, what I've seen, um, some things are better uh, after the fact because you have certain people in place. There's been a lot of, of turnaround in Washington. Now, if we look at playing, there's a whole lot of change going on, man. So it's, it's the, the different theories and the different uh, uh, concepts that, that guys have. I'm still trying to figure out, but I'm outside looking in with that stuff um, with, with the organization as far as the players go. The organization as far as alumni go, you know, you have some that do better than others. I've heard stuff from other organizations um, outside looking in, but people that are actually inside where they tell me certain things that's going on and we try to, you know, like, oh, okay, y'all got that, y'all have this. So we kind of like, you know, as alumni, we talk to each other and compare notes. But um, right now, after playing, Washington has been more accommodating uh, to their alumni than any other team that I've played with. Okay. Ken Oxen, how about you? Yes. Yeah, uh, same thing. I have uh, I was up in Detroit for a short stint, and, you know, and obviously uh, you and then XFL and then, you know, Atlanta, but seeing two regimes of different – uh, the, the Smith family compared to the Blank family, two totally different groups. Uh, Arthur Blank, when he came in, you know, he's he's Home Depot. So when you think about customer service, you know, that's what he has, that's what he has done, that's what they have done. Uh, and it's really been, you know, one of those things when you think about as an alumnus um, and being able to be accommodated, you know, we get to go to you know, to games, they do an alumni event where you, uh, it's during the season where they come, they invite us back to make sure, you know, he makes sure the whole state is seen. He utilizes the, the ex-players to it is his advantage to put an imprint throughout the whole state. And um, the guys get to do events. Um, they still, you know, reach out to me uh, 
be able to do stuff. And, and then even to, there was a, one an event that they, they did out in Montana, they reached out to me and wanted me to be a part of that. So I was um, um, very grateful for that. You know, it, it's, he is. And then I talked to uh, this one guy who he does, he buys up like a lot of tickets, you know, oh, Tom in C? different stadiums. He's, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Tom, 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 yeah, Tom. Yeah, well, I forgot you know Tom. Well, he said Atlanta, they're one of the, is a, they're one of the one groups, the, the people who have those, t their uh, season tickets, Atlanta sends them gear, signed footballs, and other stuff. Where he says, like, a lot of the other groups don't do that. And so, mm -hmm. he, you know, he's just like, you know, and so you see it on, I, now I've, I've been able to see it on both sides, where as an alumnus, as a player, but then also as a, um, seeing it from someone else's side that is, you know, he's, he's being serviced by them or they're servicing them. So, you know, so that's, that's what's crazy when you look at that. But then also I heard like a Tennessee Titans. Now they bring in for a whole weekend, put you up. And like some of the guys that's involved in that program, they really do it big for them, you know? So, you know, it's, each program has, you know, their, their niches and how they, you know, it just depends on, I guess, Darren, probably the person that's in that player personnel area uh, or alumni alumni relations um, that deal with uh, deal with the alumni. It all depends on who they have in that area too. It all depends on who they have in that area too. Because like you said, with the alumni relations, we switched and we had somebody that was a former player, but his longest stint was when he was with another team. And he played with Washington for – I oh, think a yeah. year. Yeah. And then after that, you know, he came back, he left and then came back and then became the alumni relations guy. But he had some hiccups along mm -hmm. the way um, yeah. doing it because you hear other people talking about he's getting help from other people in other divisions. You don't realize how many divisions there are amongst the team because you have the charitable organization, you have the, the where they go out and they solicit from business business that that side then they have another side and they have another side and but all of them end up doing some of the same stuff together to pull us in and they end up yeah. being at the same events like if they call it like they, they may call ken they may call me and call somebody else to come and do something for an initiative mm -hmm. but because certain people call you you don't realize which initiative it is and they you yeah. know and they'll pay you to show up for the initiative so you call and find out okay who is this through and they're trying to tell you who's stuff, um, who's who it's through or whatever. Oh, well, let me connect you to this person. I mean, it's just so many. It's just so it's 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 a lot of working parts. Let's let me just say that it's a lot of working parts, you know. And sometimes it's smooth, and sometimes it's not so smooth. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we give you here. NFL talks with guys who play. That's where the on the, on the back end. That's the business community relations side of it. Uh, we got Ken Ox and Deion Fox, NFL Talks, Fox and Ox, Mike King here. All righty, uh, we're going to weekend uh, game, games this weekend. Let's put a wrap on on this past week's game. What do you guys think? What's a couple of things that stood out to you? Ox, we'll go with you first. Just the quarterback play. You know, you think, look at uh, the teams that played last week and how they played. Uh, you know, the quarterbacks really, you know, you look at shoot Trevor Lawrence, you know, and how he played. You look at um, Purdy and how he didn't do well in the first quarter, and then he, you know, he was allowed. He, he ended up being to get back, but then, you know, uh, Dak Prescott, you know, how he played. You know, he he really played. You know, you know he he, he and he he played five touchdowns. So, and he's going to have to continue, but that's really what stood out to me and even down to, you know, the Bengals and how they, how they worked. How about you, Mr. Fox? Um, I looked at a few things this weekend. Um, one of the things, yeah, quarterback play is one. Uh, when you're talking about 
Trevor Lawrence coming out and throwing four picks in the first quarter and then rebounding from that. Okay, either he's can rebound from anything or that team hate to make a comparison, you know, blows a 20 point lead uh to lose the game. The only yeah. thing the stage wasn't as big as the Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah. Um and then the coaching for another like certain things that stand out, the coaching, the offense against the Bills. You have the ball, mm-hmm. it's fourth and a foot, and you don't get to play in. Yeah. So now you have a delay of game. Now it's fourth and six. The play you run, now you need a first down to keep your drive alive in order to have a chance to give your team a shot to win. It's a no-brainer, you know, and I know I've never coached in the NFL. However, I've played in the league. Ken has played in the league. Mike, you've not played in the league, but you can sit here and all three all of, of us can probably. Home. Exactly. So uh, all three of us can sit here and go, okay, fourth and a foot, quarterback sneak, quarterback under center, somebody push him from behind. Everybody's doing it. It's now legal to do. And instead, you see the coach on the sideline trying to figure out which play he's calling, calls it in too late. They don't get the ball snapped. Then when they then when they actually call the play, when where they get the delay a game, the quarterback is in gun and it's a running play that's that takes so long to develop, a slow developing running play. That's not what you do because there's no threat. There's no threat of pass, there's no threat of anything else. So the defense has a certain mindset, pin my ear back and go. I thought some of the play calling in a couple of the games were questionable. Uh, I just didn't understand it. And then some games, you know, it was the quarterback and the receivers were not on the same page. Um, defense were making mistakes. So, I mean, you know, I mean, to each, congratulations to all the teams that made it to the next round. And I think this week is going to be you know, probably I'm it's hoping it'll be better games from start to finish. Yeah. Alrighty, I hope it'll so, be better uh, calls, better managed. Question. All righty. So, uh, Mr. Fox, you played on the defensive side of the ball. You just brought up Trevor Lawrence. Um, let, let's go to this scenario right here. Pick number one. You're the defense. What do you guys say? What? Okay. <laughs> We we for so we got pick number one. We, we like yeah, we good. We 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 going in. All right, good. We got a takeaway. All right, cool. Okay, Give, get a ball to the um offense. Let them do something with it. All right, so but but wait a second. You're on. You're the de- you're the defense for Trevor Lawrence. You're on his. Team. Oh, the defense for Trevor. Oh oh okay. So, right, so I'm, how I'm you a, looking I'm at Jackson him with pick number one? Pick number one. I'm like. All right, we'll shake it off. We'll go out here and get the ball back. Okay. Pick number two. All right, come on, man. Um, <laughs> okay. We got we, we to tighten up. We got to tighten up. Okay, so wait we a second. We got tighten up, but we're going to go out here, you know, do our job. You say you start off pick number two. All right, come on, man. All right, let's do We still civil. We yeah, good. come on. Yeah, because we still good. Yeah, we still good. We still civil. It's just... All right, we 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 gotta we gotta get out here and get this get this get this ball back. Can't give up no points, you know. Gotta okay, make it minimal. Pick number three. Does he need security at that point? Um, not so much security, but it's 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 he 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 getting some uh <laughs> some balled up. Face. <laughs> Those looks. <laughs> he getting some looks. He getting he some getting side some- eyes. Okay. He gets him side. You you you're not gonna say too much to him because he's he's that guy, you know. He's you know number one overall draft pick to 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 Jacksonville, and uh, he's you know he's he, a, he's their money guy. He's their yeah. money guy. So all right, so you're giving him the side eye with pick number yeah. three, Mr. Fox. Um, what happens with pick number four? It's at that point. It's the first. <laughs> it's still the first quarter. But you still like again, <laughs> you know, man. You like it's... again, what the? And so you just so so you just you know, it's like ah, 
So you just, I mean, you just go out there and say, look, man, let's just go out here and try to make something happen, man. And and hopefully, you know, he'll take care of the ball and coach a cause and run it. Blue. But, <laughs> coach calls him. So And so, but he brings you back. And what you say at the end, that's my boy? You say it then, like, you know, you happy, but you're probably having a conversation with him about, hey, man, we can't do this next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Ladies and it gentlemen, turns, that's why we bring them in. So you say, and you pull them aside and be like, yo, we, we can't live like that. That's dangerous. Yeah, it, right? it, it is. It is because it's not every, it, it's that, what he did is like winning the lottery. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You, you, we can go through and try to figure out how many quarterbacks have thrown four interceptions in a game and then led their team to a win. Okay. And I can guarantee, and I can guarantee you, in all the years of the NFL, is less than is less than five. As a matter of fact, while you talking to Ken, I'm gonna find that information out. There you go. All right, Ken. So now you're on the offensive side of the ball, and every time your your kicker comes up, he's missing extra points. Oh God. What? All right. So Ken, what happens with the first one? You're okay. Yeah, but, um, you know, we, we scored a touchdown. All right, that's, you know, you know, I know you, you didn't you didn't kick some long distance this year, you know, and just some something, something's off. You know, I'm I'm from the sideline looking, could have been a hole. So you know, say, hey, we good, we good, we good. We good. Missed point number two. And now you say, like, look, man, <laughs> you, we got and, and because it's it's quick, because you got to go on the other side. So that look, man, we need points. We need every point. Come on, let's let's talk to somebody. Yeah. Number three. All you got is one job. <laughs> you got one job. And so and then cause and cause that was because I played, you know, with Morton Anderson and Dan Straczynski. And so Dan, and, and that's the other thing with kickers. You know, some kickers you can say stuff to them all day long. Some you know that you can't. Like a more you can say, come on, man, what are you doing? Like a Dan, and he's a punter, and he can kick. He's like, you're just like, dang, you know, you're trying this whole thing. And that's the thing. You either coddle them or you get on. And in that sense, you know, but still, you're like, you know, you still got the goat over there. And you still, you know, you, you, you're still trying to make sure that, you know, the game's still close. You know, is you know, you got six, and then, you know, you got, you know, 12 points. It's like, you, they do, they do, you know, scores from being back in it. So, and then number four come, he said, look, you know, you ain't going to be here, you know, after tomorrow. <laughs> that, you know the bad part about that is when you see the person melt. And the, the bottom sells. You know, even if a quarterback gets burnt, you know, we always talk about, yo, he going to the burn ward. Or, or some, but there's other players out there. When you see the kicker and he's missing, he's just by himself, just looking sad. He got the ball kind of kicking into the net. You you feel bad for him, but all righty. So here, Mr. Fox, did you get on your uh, your research staff? I'm on my research staff now. All righty, Ken Oxen. Let's you. start off. Uh oh, ladies and gentlemen, we got some breaking news. So, so right now is showing. Go go into the next thing. I'll get it after this. All righty, Ken Oxen done. Let's start off with the games, this, the games this week. Here. All right. What's the first game we're, we're talking about? First game is uh, we're going to the four picks in itself. You know, you got the Jags and Kansas City. It, it's going to be interesting because, you know, you got Peterson who played under Andy Reid, who and coached under Andy Reid. Yes. You know, they're playing against each other, you know, you know, uh, again. And, uh, this year, and um, it, it's 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 gonna be interesting how that game plan because you know Kansas City's defense is not necessarily the best in the league, uh, but you know if you most of the times with Kansas City, you know they're they're outscoring, so you know so those are the things in where you know you go you go figure out real quick if Jacksonville can't 
keep the ball in. They're, they're getting the Jack the Jags getting nine points. So that's a slap in the face right there. That is true. You figure that Kansas City does outrun people. Jacksonville has shown that they can put some points up too. So if it gets to now, you know, for the fan, I'm sure there's the fans out there who like the six three game or whatever. But we could take the 4138. Yeah. And with a 4138, it could be anybody. Me, I'm torn with this game because obviously being a Philly connection, Andy Reid. And it yep. got so bad after Chip Kelly, the Eagles called Andy Reid and said, who you got? <laughs> and he sent us Doug Peterson. And you know what he did for us. So there's always love for both of those guys there. But uh, this one right here, I'm going out there and taking my man Doug Peterson. Mm-hmm. And it's <laughs> nice. oh. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, it hates me. It, it breaks my heart to say that, but uh, that's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm going with the young, the younger than the young gun. Yeah, and, and that is very interesting because you know when you look at it though, um, the last game when um, they lost to Kansas City in Week Nine, they had a very slow start, and they just ran out of time. So they gave Kansas City some fits when they played them. And the biggest, like the biggest thing is this, you know, um, in that game when they played them, the defense didn't take care, the offense didn't take advantage of the, they had three turnovers. So they didn't take advantage of those turnovers, but then also the Jags run game was missing in that game as well. So, and that's the other side, if they can keep Kansas City off the field uh, and then just convert third downs better. They were, uh, in that game, they were four, 14 for third, on third downs. So, um, those are the biggest parts that I can – where in your – at your point that the Jags can come come out victorious over Kansas City. Um, if you can throw four picks and come back, you got a short memory. Yeah, but you got to understand, if, if he if, if he throw four picks against – he didn't throw four picks against Kansas City. That could be 21 points. Easy. Yeah. You know, 28 easy. You know, yeah. but – So you're uh, saying every time he throw it, they can score. Exactly. Okay. I mean, and they've shown it because the mm-hmm. offense that they have, the, the weapons they have on offense, you know, it. You you have to count for every single person on their offense. Yeah, you have to, you have to. Now they can be beaten, but not when you're giving them that many chances to be successful. Yeah, when exactly. you when you're turning the ball over, and every time you turn, you talking about every time that an offense gets the ball, they're expecting to the score. OK, mm-hmm. they expect to score a touchdown, not just a field goal. So if you're talking about the max points that you could get. Every time you turn the ball over and if the other yeah. team scores, that's a 14 point turnaround. Minus seven for me, plus seven for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference of, of, of you know, you're talking about 56 points, 56 points, man, 56 yeah. points. That's a 56 point swing. Minus yes. 28 for me, plus 28 for you. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of points. Yes, sir. Hey, you, do all, you, you do all that in the first quarter? <laughs> you know, they, you, you talking about, they, they do that against Kansas City in the first quarter. The starters are sitting by the third. Yeah. Easily. The starters are sitting by the third. Yeah. It seems like Patrick. But I did find that information so out. Okay, go ahead. Let's give it to us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our research department really has come through for us, uh, Mr. Fox. All right, so he did four. I found one better. They have where they started the stats at five picks or more and won the game. Hey, there have only been nine quarterbacks that have done that. Ken, one of the quarterbacks is yours. Okay. Matt Ryan, your former teammate in Atlanta, you was there with him. You was there with him, right? Yeah, I was. Right? Uh, well, a little bit after me, but yeah, I, I'll take him. <laughs> okay, so Matty Ice, Matty Ice, Matty Ice, Matty Ice threw five picks against Arizona, and they still came out and won twenty-three to nineteen. It was Arizona. Also, Tony Romo. Wow. Uh huh. Tony Romo in two thousand seven threw five picks. Against Buffalo, okay, uh, and one. And then Mark Rippon, Washington, 
threw at least five picks again with a win over Chicago. All right. Mm. And then you had Wade Wilson, Minnesota, threw at least five picks, went over Denver. John Elway went over Kansas City, mm. threw at least five picks. This was back in nine. This was back in nineteen eighty five. 1980, Dan Fouts, San Diego win over Oakland, at least five picks. 1980, but he might have thrown for Joe Ferguson. Yards. Exactly. <laughs> September, hey, look, 1980, Joe Ferguson, Buffalo win, uh, win over Miami. In 1970, Johnny Unitas, at least five, Baltimore, that's back when it was the Baltimore Colts win over, over mm. Chicago. And then back in 1967, the last one, okay, it was Bart Starr, Green Bay, and it went over Chicago with at least five picks in a game and one. Shoot, it's most of those guys, you know, they were, you know, perennial big time players, too. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so they did go on. They, they lived to die by that arm. Like yeah. Especially Dan Fouts. I used to I used to love that offense, but that was before you guys' time. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, that's how it is when you've been around a long time. All right, so Mr. Mr. Fox, who you got for 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 this week for uh, the Jags and Mr. Mahomes and the crew? I'm going to roll with Kansas City, man. I'm going to roll with Kansas City just because uh, – I understand that, you know, they came back last, the Jaguars came back last week. However, you can't make that many mistakes um, every week. And Kansas mm -hmm. City is the type of team that would capitalize on those type of mistakes. So they're hungry for it. They're going to see how that happened, and they're going to see um, how they can get him to duplicate that. So I'm going to hey. uh, go with Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, if you thought that I was bet betting against Patrick Mahomes, you lost your mind. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, and look at that. Mahomes has yet to lose a divisional round uh, in four starts. He, I don't know. It just seems like he's been around forever. Yeah, I know. And just doing the stuff that he's doing. All righty, that is, uh, so everybody's going with the with the Jags? Mm -hmm. No. I'm just no. messing around. We're just all going with Kansas City. Uh, uh, what's the next one? Uh, we got the Giants in Philly. You know what? Is this even a game? And the answer is yes. It, it because knows. the way the Giants played, as you could imagine, it was not a good weekend for me. The Cowboys, no, it was not. And then the Giants, I'm I'm not feeling all that good. Yeah, especially no. the way those three front dudes played for the Giants last week. Yeah. Then I don't know what they ate, but it seemed like they were just manhandling that O line last week. Daniel Jones like they... looking like a real football player, calling him Danny Dimes. I mean, what did oh, so I saw the thing where he said uh, Vanilla Vic when he talked about your boy Michael Vic. He said Danny Dimes out there running like that. Well, mm. I'm going with my Eagles. That's <laughs> it. But it is not – it's not the same swagger that I was having, like, the first nine weeks of the season. Mr. Fox? Yeah. He, well, I, and that's the biggest thing is Jalen 100%. So, um, with this game, based on how the Giants played last week, yeah, they pulled it out. Um, they gelled at the right time. Never know what Giants team is going to show up. I will say Philly hasn't had that issue with as much this season on yeah. which team is going to show up. Okay. The Giants have had, you know, situations where they come out and they look, you know, pretty good like they did last week. And they had a lot of times where they come out and not look as good. So it depends on who shows up. But based on what I've seen, we hope that Philly does not have the hangover from being off. Okay, and they come out and can click. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going to go ahead because everybody's healthy. I'm thinking, you know, it's a new season. 
I'm thinking Philly may come out and pull this one out. It's gonna be it's gonna be a close one just because of the rivalry between the two. But yeah. I'm I think Philly I think Philly maybe by like seven, you know. Okay. There you it's go. It's gonna be close. This is uh, NFL Talk Fox Knox, Mike King, Ken Ox, and Don Deion Fox. Uh, Ox, really quickly, how can people find you out there? Uh, all things Ken Ox lines on uh, the web, uh, Fox uh, Sports Group dot com, uh, Fox SG on Instagram, um, uh, Ken Ox nine dot Ken dot Ox nine at NFL Alumni dot com. Mr. Fox. At 5756foundation on Instagram, 5756foundation.org website, making positive change in the community. Also, Dion.fox at NFLalumni.org and Mr. Fox at 5756foundation.com. Well, there you so, go. One of my okay, feel to reach Fox, out. I'm sorry. That's how you can catch us. That's right. You're out there doing big I things. I said, feel free to reach out. That's how you can reach, reach out to me. That's right. You're doing big things in the community. We'd like to thank them. Hey, we'd like to thank our show sponsors. That is Core Mortgage. My man, Kelvin Oliver. KO is out there. Nicole Reed. Nicole Real Estate. She is the queen of RVA real estate as well as Synergy Technical. Those are the partners that keep on the mic with Mike. Mike from Biz Radio running. So we'd like to thank them really quickly. Let's touch on, on the GOAT. Is Tom Brady done? Or uh, we'll start with you, Ken Oxen. And should he be? Really quickly. <laughs> Yeah, he had a, it just, you know, it's him, you know, you know, I thought he was done a long time ago, but he, when he came to Tampa, he showed that he could, but he's old, you know, he's as old as has ever done it. And his age really showed um, at the end, you know, really the season and some of the games that he played. And so, um, you know, but it's really the mindset of him. So, you know, his arms still look, pretty where you look at his arm him throwing and Russell Wilson and those two throwing you know his arm still look you know just as strong as Russell and Russell is a little bit younger than he is so uh, you know um, I think yes and give somebody else a chance um, but you know it's really where his mindset is Mr. Fox so you tee up and you see Tom <laughs> Brady back there the best that ever done it he is the GOAT waiting 46 years old and that could be 84 and then you think about, I don't have to run him down like Jalen Hurts, Mahomes, you know, uh, any Josh Allen. We don't have to run him down. He's going to be right there where we can find him. What do you think about when you look up and it's him there, even with all those Super Bowls? I'm, you know, I get to uh, tackle a legend, you know, <laughs> because, because, back, because back when I played, the legend that I played against, you know, it was in. I played against a couple guys that were considered legends. You know, you got Dan Marino, you got Joe Montana. I, 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 I played against Joe Montana when he went to Kansas City. Okay, after he got traded to Kansas City, uh, Dan Marino. I went against him in practice every day. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to seeing guys like that. It was multiple guys back then in the '90s and before. You only have one or two like that now. You know, somebody that's done the stuff that he's done. But do I think that he's done? Um, he's only done if he wants to be done because evidently people think he still has something in the tank. Yeah, he's old. He's been around a while. If you give him the same weapons that he had the year he went to the Super Bowl with with just Tampa Bay, he has a better season than what he had this year. Very true. He has a better season than what he had this year. So you put him in a situation where he has help, then yeah. I don't care how good the quarterback is. He can't do it alone. <clears throat> That's why I see 11 people out on the field. Okay? That's why 11 people out on the field. Mahomes has good running back, tight ends, two good receivers, and the offensive line is pretty good. With all those weapons that he has that he can get the ball to, not to mention he can also run he, – he has so many threats around him. He is a threat himself when he takes off running. So – you know, if we want to talk about stuff like that, yeah. A lot of quarterbacks can't survive with just one guy. They double mm -hmm. coverage him the whole time, and they say, okay, we'll let somebody else beat us. We're not going to let this guy beat us. We'll let other people beat us. You know, so do I think he has something left in the tank? Yeah, he probably does. Is he taking a big chance coming back? 
you know, he's more susceptible to injury because he can't take those hits? Of course. However, you you give him, you know, a tight end, two good receivers and a good running back, he can do what he did when he his first year that he got to Tampa. Mm -hmm. People thought he was washed up then and he goes straight to the Super Bowl. Second year, he goes to the Super Bowl again and loses in the Super Bowl. I mean, loses in the – he goes to the playoffs and then loses in the in the uh, divisional round. So, I mean, you know, he makes two good, strong runs. And in the third year he's there, he he gets to the playoffs after a not-so-good start to the season. With less – and each year he had had less weapons. Mm -hmm. There you go. Deion Fox, Ken Oxen down here. All righty, Ox, uh, that is Saturday. Let's move to Sunday. What we got going on on Sunday? Yeah. And, oh, and also one more stat from that Philly Giants game. The Giants in nine tries have not beaten Philly in Philly. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he is uh, flexing. <laughs> but it was hey, hey, uh, Fox, it, it wasn't a strong flex, though. It was – was not. Oh, look, look, I'm going to tell you like this. It might not have been strong in person, but on this on this screen, it looked pretty strong, buddy. I tell you what, that, that's not all that confident right there. I'll let you know about 11 o'clock tonight. There it is. All right. <laughs> all right, the, the, next the, game, Sunday. We're kicking it off with who? Yep, the Bengals and the Bills. Mm -hmm. So, the makeup Basically, um, when you think about them playing, this is what they're they're going to have in, in in store there. And in, uh, in the game before, what um, I think it's all based on how healthy really is Josh Island, you know. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, but the other side is um, Cincinnati still got to rely on Joe Burrows a lot because their running game is 29th in the NFL. And so, you know. And then this still is – are the Bills still riding a wave of, um, you know, the kid getting hurt? So we'll we'll see on, you know, those parts and those pieces. But it's his playoff time and the speed of the game is is, is, is a definitely different factor. And, and if Josh Allen is a little banged up, you know, and he can't run like he was running, it's going to be a factor. Mr. Fox. Man, I'm telling you like this. I'm looking and, forward uh, to the game. The person starts off with, let me tell you like this. <laughs> School is giving it be in session. I'm I'm looking for a good game. Uh it's it's I, I think I think it's gonna be a shootout. Uh and it's gonna come down to defense. We both know they got high powered offenses. It's gonna come down to defense. So the defense that holds up the best is gonna be however I feel. I believe because of how well Cincinnati has been playing, I think they'll be able to pull it out. I know that Buffalo is riding off of their teammate and the teammate coming back and recovering and all that. So it's it's going to be interesting. But I do believe that the Bengals may go ahead and pull it out. It's going to be a close one. I'm going to say the Bengals by three. I'm taking the Bengals. Hey, is uh. You got a chance to start a team. Do you take Josh Allen or Joe Burrow? Uh, Ken Oxen guy. Burrows. Burrows all day. Because he just <clears throat> he he's not going to take that. Like Josh Allen is, I think he, uh, he he's more or less he's Cam Newton two um two point oh. You know, so I can see him wearing out faster because you know Burrow's not trying to take those hits. No, he's not. <laughs> You know, he 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 can but he getting down on getting out of bounds. Where Josh Allen, he trying to he 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 proving the point to you every time he, he said, Look, <laughs> I'm a big dude, you get in my way, I'm gonna feel all this. And we saw so, it yeah. happen to Cam Newton doing that same thing. Yeah. Uh Mr. Fox, who you got if you gotta start with a what QB? Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. I'm gonna go with Burrow. I think, I think I think I think I think Allen has gotten smarter. Uh but Barrow has something about him as far as uh his football IQ with the game, throws that he's able to make, the connection that he 
has with his receivers. Um, Allen is getting better. But Joe Barrow has not had to rely on his on his running ability, on, on, on scrambling and running like Allen has. So that means that that kind of heightens you up. Um, that would have heightens your senses up where it comes to, all right, I need to get this ball out quicker. I need to find my receivers. I need to go to my check downs. I need to go through my progressions. I think Burrow is ahead of Josh Allen when it comes to that. So that's why I would go with Joe Burrow. Um, sure. Both both great players. Don't get me wrong. But I think Burrow is a little bit ahead of the game when it comes to going through his progressions and finding receivers and keeping himself alive in the pocket to be able to make those passes, those throws. So there's yeah. times that uh, Josh Allen has had to run for his life more. Yeah, and he doesn't mind pulling the ball down to run because, you know, he's 245-pound okay. quarterback. So you say he's you know, gotten he's, he's, he's a big man. You know? He is, okay. But there's he, bigger yeah. men chasing him down. He, you know. Exactly. It's bigger man chasing him down, and after a while, it, you know, it'll wear down. So, but when I say Burrow, it, there's a difference between keeping yourself alive to make a throw, and you like, okay, I can't make this throw, and you take off running. There's a difference between that, and sometimes it looks good. Oh man, did you see what Josh Allen did? Because you know he, 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 he big boyed a DB one day where he stepped on him, where he looked like <laughs> Derrick Henry stepped on him in a, a DB one day. OK, so it happens. It happens. But that's that's not likely to happen as much, you know, in his favor. So sometimes you know, the player need... learns. You're So you're saying sometimes but sometimes it's like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And then <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden they go back to doing, you know, Michael Vick, every time he ran in Philly, we all held our breath like, is he going to get up? Because he was getting tattooed. Yeah. And yeah. we were like, and after a while, And after a while, they get your number. And after a while, they get your number, you know, and they'll be able to account for that. So. There you go. Then, ladies and gentlemen, this is Insight, NFL Talk, Fox and Ox here, ESPN Richmond, Mike Cambridge Radio. Uh, we got Ken Ox and Dine. We got Deion Fox. Last game for the weekend, gentlemen. What we got, Ox? We got Dallas and the 49ers. <clears throat> you know, um, Monday night games stink, you know, <clears throat> and what a lot of, especially for the away team, uh, you're hoping <clears throat> that the Cowboys stayed um, overnight versus leading that night. And the reason I say that, because my, um, when I played my, my rookie, we, we had, like we had, we had three Monday night games. You get no rest because you finish <clears throat> at 10, 30, 10, 10, 10, 30, whatever that is, you know, it take about an hour to two hours to get yourself squared away to <clears throat> get on um, the bus to get to the airport. Now you get back to your home around five o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and so now you have to drive to your home from the airport. So now, and Tuesday's your day off. You're really not getting any rest. And so now, you know, the coaches, they're pre prepping on the plane, coming back, trying to look at film to get ready for the team. And then, you know, it's you're playing catch-up on your rest the whole time. And I think that's what it, – it, it does play a part in the game. Um, okay. even, so that playing that Monday night hurts – you know the team more than it, it than it helps so you know and with the 49ers playing the way they're playing um i think the bigger part with this is that you have a rookie quarterback and you have will shanahan go back and resort to how he lost games in the past when it's a high uh, pressure type game um and go away from his balance uh in those pressure situations so and then you saw purdy last week same thing with the young quarterback um, with Trevor Lawrence. Purdy can't have those hiccups in the in the first um, uh, in the first quarter like that, especially with Parsons on the other side, you know. And now Dallas, Dak has to have you know that game that he had um, you know this week in order for them because they they Dallas is there is there 
is there a son for for that? If he doesn't have that game, I think it's you know it's gonna be a close game. Uh, but I think the 49ers come on top. <laughs> Yo, can Oxy not take in the San Francisco 49ers? Mr. Fox. Oh, the 49ers, just because the the defense is playing well. That third string quarterback isn't playing like a third string quarterback. The third string quarterback is playing like he's been starting all season. Actually, um his his QB performance was, has been better than their first round draft pick that got hurt and Garoppolo. So uh overall <laughs> Based on just this season, based on just this season and seeing these guys play, his quarterback play has been better than the other two starters. Based on stats and outcomes, now, now you got people saying that the teams that the Forty Nine er played at the end of the season didn't have the best records and all. It doesn't matter because we all know it doesn't matter what record a team has you still have to line up and play that team and beat that team because we go back to records when Washington played Philly, Philly was undefeated. They were playing Philly at home. If Philly had all the advantages and everybody thought Philly was just going to drag Washington all around the stadium and what happens, Washington came and they, they showed up and they played that day. Mm -hmm. You talk about last week, most recent, <laughs> You got a game where a quarterback throws four picks. You think the game is over. All of a sudden, you know, they outscored a team uh 20, 20 something to uh three in the um in the in the second half and win the game. The other team blows the, you know, the team that got the four picks blows a a a, a 20 point lead. So mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be a close game, yes. I do think it's a close game, but however, I think uh, San Fran is going to come out on top. No yeah. question. I'm taking I'm taking a nine. And certain things I want to touch on really quickly here is everybody at home is, knows what time it is. You're up three scores. Why are you snapping the ball? 35, you know, 18 seconds, 20 some seconds to go. Run the clock down. Everybody <laughs> knows that. And here's the quarterback. Just like Come on, man. Like, and I yeah. guess it's different right when you're in the middle of it. When you're in the middle of it. No, it's not you, different. You know, it's, it's coaching. Yeah. Mike, it's coaching. It's coaching, Mike. It's coaching. It's coaching because you have some people that get so complacent when they have that lead. They're not thinking that far enough ahead. Uh, because you can still play aggressive, but okay, burn up more time on the clock. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. You can still you can still call the same plays you're calling, but hey, make sure that you snap the ball with like three or four seconds left on the clock every time. Make sure you look at the play clock and you snap the ball with three or four seconds left on the clock, not 14, 15 seconds left on the clock. Mm -hmm. And everybody at home knows that. We're just looking at like, you know, when they when you're up three or four scores, you're like, okay, you know, they get one. We're like, all right, they got one. Then they get two. You start looking around, and then they get three. It's like, all right, now everybody tensing up. So uh, this is Oxen Fox, Mike King, Deion Fox, Ken Oxen Dine. Really quickly, so uh, Oxen, we're talking about the Monday night game. Man, you got to give the NFL credit to just come up with something like that, the whole wild card weekend and then Monday, just milking it. The NFL <clears throat> is for making money right there because you look at that every yeah. – I mean, there was a time when, when the Super Bowl was over – Football went away. Football yeah. is on every single day. Yeah. <clears throat> for them to play that few games. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people are not talking baseball at 162 games. I'm going to do something with NASCAR. NASCAR goes from February to October. <laughs> you know, NFL, you know, you guys got 18 games, but you milk it for the whole year. So from a business model standpoint, the NFL got it right. I mean, this Monday night game, everybody's watching. They're hyping it. It's Monday night football. And you know, and it, and it's and and they have, and they've done it, you know, forever because you have these kids where they already have these athletes. They already have a fan base because of what the colleges they come out. So that helps. You know, some people they don't have teams. They have players that they follow then on top of that just everything the nfl has been able to do you think about you know 
now, NFL football is almost, you know, nine months. When you think about, you know, the preseason, you think about the, the draft. And now what they've really done is they've allowed, you know, it's ever since the first HBO inside um, NFL, they, they're allowing them in season. That to, was a different one. Now here yeah. I'm watching Cliff Kingsbury and he 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 in the Philippines somewhere chilling. <laughs> so oh. yeah, you talking about when they did uh Arizona doing the, the hard knocks? Yeah, during the season. Yeah, you know, because in inside the NFL is one thing and hard knocks is something else. So that's two different shows that they got. Inside the yeah. NFL is specifically talking about the NFL, but then the hard knocks when they came out, when they do preseason, now they're doing in season. So yeah. I know what you mean, man. They, of course, they're trying to corner the market, man. That's that's why the first time the XFL came out, it wasn't successful because it was not yeah. connected to the NFL. Now yeah. the XFL is connected to the NFL in a different in a different way, because yes. I, I said this before on one of the shows that the NFL alumni now has what they call an alumni academy. This academy gets players that have been cut or not drafted or not given a shot or not picked up to go there and train. And they train in case there's an injury or whatever, and they can get picked up from there and get signed because they're in the alumni Academy. Not only that, the XFL is pick. They're picking their players directly out of that alumni Academy to start off their, their teams. So their draft picks, their original draft picks that's coming out, they're coming from the guys that's not getting picked up, and they're coming from the guys that've been in this alumni <laughs> academy to start off with, and then they're going to have tryouts around uh, around the U.S. Uh, at certain uh, spots to pick up guys as well. So you got three ways that you're getting them, but this time the the XFL is directly working with the NFL, yeah, and or entities of the NFL to be able to get these guys opportunities to get to the big game. So, you know, before it wasn't like that, Vince McMahon came in and was going against everything because the direct pipeline to the NFL at that time was NFL Europe. Yeah. Guys were deciding to stay home in the States instead of going over to Europe. You, you were making more money in the States. Everybody got the same amount of money. Back then, the XFL in the year 2000, everybody got 50 grand to play eight games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Base pay. You got to, everybody got a win bonus. Okay. Quarterbacks got 55, kickers got 45 grand, eight games. You win a game, you got a $2,500 win bonus every time you won a game. Then you go to the playoffs. Top three teams, there's only four teams in each division. Top three teams in each division went to the playoffs. They were taking players away. People were turning down NFL Europe. So they didn't have players going to NFL Europe because they weren't getting any money. They were getting like pennies compared to what we were getting here. So, you know, of course, that was shut down. 20 years later, XFL is back, you know, and most people that don't remember don't remember because it was only one year. I'm glad that these guys, that these young guys have chances to go out here and opportunities to go out here to get picked up by NFL teams. I'm glad that it's changed for them, that they have uh, the resources that they have, the leagues that they have where they can be compensated, taken care of. They can also have a way to make some money until they get a chance to get the big payday. And for some of them, you know, that big payday may be playing a few years in the XFL because I surely thought, you know what, I could do this XFL thing for about three or four years, you know, play, play, play for like four months and then go home and then work and then come back and play for another three, four months where I'm making – a minimum of 50 plus K a year over a three month period. Come on, man. You're making 50 K over, over like a minimum of 50 K over three months. Who who wouldn't do that as, as a ball player mm -hmm. and then come home. I know guys, I know guys, I, it's one guy in particular. He played at Henrico, played at Norfolk state, ended up going to Baltimore Ravens and playing wide receiver. He played at Baltimore, maybe two years, uh, Something happened, uh, left Baltimore. He ended up going to uh, to Arena One and playing Arena One. Okay. Played in Arena One all these years, breaking all these records, 
was the uh, iron 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 bowl uh like iron player and iron player of the year is like you play both ways in arena and you know he was iron player uh of the year or whatever it was he he had all these accolades and so after his like third or fourth year doing that i asked him i said yo and oh and he would come home in the off season and work you know and work a job like in the office he, he had a job here in richmond so i caught him at the gym one day and we were talking i said yo I said, you going to go back? I said, because I hear you, you know, you putting up numbers and all this. He said, no, nah, I'm not going back to the league. I was like, why? He said, man, why would I go back to the league and mess up the money that I'm getting playing in arena? He said, man, I'm making, he said, I'm making six figures right now in arena. Mm -hmm. He said, I got endorsements. When I go to play, they put me up in an apartment. They give me a car to drive. He was like, I'm there. He said, he said, I'm the man there. He said, and I'm making good money. He said, and I can come home in the off season at the end of arena one. He said, and I work here and I got a business here that me and my wife are, are, are handling. He was like, I'm not going to mess that money up. I was like, okay, again, you heard, you hear my, you hear my term I use all the time. Okay. Business decision. You taking a chance to go back to the league that cuts you and you may not get picked up and then you mm. because you left the arena team that you were playing for where you were doing so well and making that much money they may feel some type of way because you left them high and dry and they may put somebody else in your place so no i understand that but again ken you know as well as i do the opportunities mm. that the guys are afforded today we didn't have those opportunities 20 years ago you no. know we or 20, 20, 20, 25, 25 years ago for me, 25, 26 years ago for me. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, 30 years ago for me. <laughs> this is 2023. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 30 years ago for me, they didn't have these opportunities. We had NFL, Arena One, and Canada. That's it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Insider talk and NFL talk, Fox and Ox, Mike King. Uh, gentlemen, uh, really quickly, Ox, how can people find you? FoxSportsGroup.com, all things Ken Oxidine on the web, um, Ken.Oxidine at NFLalumni.org. There you go, com. Mr. Fox. At 5756Foundation on Instagram, 5756Foundation.org, uh, the website, Dion.Fox at NFLalumni.org. Uh, also, you can find me at Mr. Fox at 5756foundation.com. I'm out there. We make a positive change in the community, baby. So, you know, if you need to get in contact with me for any collaboration, feel free to reach out. There you go. Ox and Fox, you guys are doing big things in the community. We'd like to thank you guys for doing that. This is Mike King. You can follow me on social platforms on the Mike and Mike RVA. That is on ESPN Richmond 106.1, as well as... Uh, International Business Growth Radio. That's what we do. We talk to game changers out there. Uh, really quickly, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be able to catch up with us on Super Bowl Sunday. We're just going to say the big game Sunday because my uh, legal fund, uh, it does not allow me to say something that may cause, uh, uh, what is, what's the name of that law firm? Do we cheat them and how? Whatever. Coming after me. So we're not going to, we're just going to call it the big game. And we're going to be coming to you from a location. Uh, we'll give you more information on that, but we're going to have NFL alum. We're going to be there. My man, Samar Lemon's going to be there with the lemon drop. He's going to be out after uh, Mr. Fox's watch. And so uh, we got him and as well as EJ Sports, who's a, a young sports reporter with a, with his own podcast out of Verona High School, where they're going to do some interviewing as well. That's what we do here. We bring people up and give them a shot. So on the mic to Mike, Deion Fox, Ken Ox, and Don Gentlemen, we're talking to you. As I would say, I'm like Russell Wilson. Go Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Later. Later.